Hi, my name is Ian. Uh, I'm one of the team leads here at Packet Labs. And you know, as a team lead here, we lead a team of eight people to sort of carry out engagements from start to finish and uh, ranges of all types. Uh, and I'm here today to talk about uh, penetration testing, especially the infrastructure of penetration testing as a service that we provide for clients. Essentially what this is, it's sort of a detailed uh, attack narrative to help an organization understand the risk and impacts of the findings that we discover. And our methodology is essentially a combination of a lot of different frameworks, uh, such as the SANS Pentest methodology, uh, the NIST SB800-115, uh, and the MITRE attack framework for enterprises to ensure um, you meet your uh, regulatory compliance uh, needs, uh, as well as understanding uh, your practical secu uh, secure security posture against a, a, a moderately motivated attacker who wants to um, gain access to perhaps your intellectual property, your you know crown jewels, uh, and your you know, sensitive data and information. Packet Labs infrastructure penetration testing service is very unique because. Um, in, a, in a lot of ways, um, companies benefit from this because they want to identify all the paths that you know an attacker can use to reach what's important to them. So a lot of the times, you know, what's important to a company might be something like you know some uh, their intellectual property or their customer information or their client uh, databases. Those are you know the core pieces of what drives a company's revenue. And this is really beneficial because, you know, a, a lot of times companies, they have hundreds of employees, you know, maybe sometimes even thousands. It's very difficult to assess, you know, which one of them, you know, won't be coerced into turning against the company. They might, you know, there's definitely news articles where, you know, people in these advanced threat actor groups are paying people's year's salary in advance just to give them, you know, weeks worth of access to the company. And after that, they can say, oh, no, I was compromised. It gives them a lot of deniability, right, for such. Uh, yeah, so insider threats, I think, is a big thing that companies are worrying about. And it's very beneficial because we typically carry out this service as an insider threat. As an insider threat, what can we reach? Can we reach all the things that make your business tick and function? Um, are we hindered at any step of that process? And I think that is very insightful for a company to see um, in terms of you know building their own security strategy. Yeah. Not me per se, but I think in in the Packet Labs team, um, we all work together to you know come up with these incredible findings. And it's not just that one person thing. It's not only just me. Um, but whenever we do find these you know exciting or impactful things we usually we share in the group and everyone will sort of uh you know uh, have an understanding of you know what went on um, just a couple i can think of uh one company um they were very interesting they make some sort of chemical formulas for um, different uh, businesses and different industries and they wanted to see if an indirect if an insider threat was in there could they potentially access these formulas. That's essentially their intellectual property, right? And so, you know, they, they plot us in, they gave us, uh, they enabled an, an active account and they said, go. And I think the, the very first thing that I think a lot of times is not one finding, it's actually a chain of findings that leads to that kind of impact. So for this company, uh, the very first one is, you know, all employees can sort of log into something like a terminal server. So imagine you'd be working in a pretty you know, medium-sized company where everyone has sort of these you know, remote desktop terminal servers they can remote into, especially they're working from home. They would turn on their VPN, open the remote desktop protocol, and type in their you know, corporate credentials. And it would get them onto like a company box where they would be able to access you know, company resources, file shares, documents, things like that. So you know, we were like a normal employee. We, got onto this box and we just kind of started looking and we noticed a notepad file where uh, one of the you know um, users were you know 
you know, accessing a database of some sort. And we found out that this user was local admin on that machine. And once, you know, and this is just a password stored in Notepad. It's, just, it's a very, you know, you might not think, oh, this is nothing like uh, crazy, but this happens still to this day. And uh, after we got that password, we proceeded to uh, dump a specific Windows process that gave us credentials in plain text. This is actually very common in older Windows machines. And with that credential, we're able to log into the domain controller. And essentially what a domain controller is, if you think about um, you know, uh, the city as an, uh, a model, the domain controller would be like the city government, which dictates all the policies and the rules. So essentially, if you take over that machine that dictates all the policies and rules, you have access to all the domain's assets. And from then on, we simply uh, decided to look into user's uh, browser because sometimes when you enter, like uh, when you go to Google or Facebook, let's say, you might click on save password. That password is actually stored somewhere in the machine when you do that. And essentially, we found out all the people who were able to access the applications that had access to the formulas. And that's how we, you know, we actually sent them a copy of the formula. Here is this it. <laughs> and they're like, oh, whoa. Yeah, and they were really surprised from that. Um, I think another example I can think of was there's this client who's very new to penetration testing and they wanted us, you know, they didn't want to give, give us access at first. And they said, here, um, here's a list of our users. What can you do? And so for this specific client, um, we decided to fish them first. Uh, and then we stumbled upon a unique uh, application. It's also something like a remote desktop terminal service, but it's exposed externally where there's like a web application. It says remote, des you know, remote desktop terminal service. You enter your corporate credentials, you get, and then you click on the RDP or the computer icon, and it puts you into a company box. So essentially, we sprayed a password. And what password spraying is, is that you take a list of users with one password. For example, uh, you know, right now is the summer. Um, if I were to do this again, I would try summer 2023 exclamation mark. One of those passwords got us in. And from then on, we decided to look at the environment. Oh, there's no antivirus. That means we could install whatever we want. Um, and eventually, it led us to this place where there's a specific configuration on the domain controller where it caches passwords. Now, that password was expired. So what we did was we looked through in the entire company. Uh, and we know that that password didn't work anymore. But that password stopped working around 2014. When you look into Windows domains, they have a field called password last set. It tells you when that last password was last reset. Now, from then on, we decided to look at the users uh, that had a password reset date older than 2014. It's very likely that account might be using that password. And we were right. And one of that, uh, and that account got us uh, to the domain controller again. So. Essentially, it's not one particular finding that's uh, impact or exciting. It's the process of discovering multiple things, chaining together to a, a bigger impact. Uh, that's a good question. I think any company running a, um, a active directory environment that has, you know, there are, you know, they run a small team of system administrators. What I mean by small team is like under 10 people. A lot of companies struggle to even find a staff of 10 people to you know, serve their IT operations for their business needs. So I think companies that are sort of in that tight ship, they would really benefit from us sort of doing this type of exercise in their environment um, so that they themselves would understand how to navigate their own risk landscape. What would the IT uh, managers, you know, do? What do they need to um, care about in order to ensure the security of the business? So, you know, companies of all sizes benefit from this offering. You know, we serve people. We serve companies that are 20 people in size to like 500 people in size to like 2,000 people in size. All different. All all these companies of different sizes. Uh, benefited from this sort of exercise. It's very difficult for IT people to keep up with the latest um, vulnerability or you know cybersecurity news. So a lot of the times, even their own patching is insufficient to guard them against a you know moderately motivated 
attacker. So I think companies that worry about security and take it seriously, I think all of them would benefit from you know, an infrastructure penetration test, especially focused within the Microsoft Active Directory. So I think this question is a bit of a loaded question <laughs> because I think if you are able to do the basics right, um, you would be doing a lot to thwart attackers already. Uh, my previous employer has said that if you were able to manage the, there's something called the CIS uh, top 18 security controls. If you understand that well, and you're able to contextualize that for your organization, you would be in a very good place. Now, on top of that, I would also add that you have to think like an attacker. I think that's very difficult, but the clients that I struggled most with are the system administrators that are educating themselves with how an attacker would do things. So there's two specific clients I call to mind, and, and they're running like a two-person shop, a two-person like IT operation shop, not, 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 not the entire company size. And when I compromised one of those admins machines, I actually saw him Googling the exact techniques, the exact tools that we were using too, because he's obviously seeing some sort of traffic that led him to that tool. So someone who's uh, behaving like that, they're a step above the rest because they're already looking into how uh, people are running these tools, how these tools work, and what kind of telemetry or what kind of data is left behind when an attacker carries out such an activity. So someone who's doing that on uh, the normal basis, they would be very prepared to thwart, the, uh, you know, thwart that or help that organization thwart you know, a, a serious attacker. So there, there's gonna be a little bit of bias because I've been here for quite a while, but I know many penetration testing uh, firms they offer infrastructure penetration testing services too. Uh, and for us, we're similar to them in that regard. I think the difference is, uh, and I'm not saying that other firms aren't thorough, but I feel like our core, uh, print, uh, our core values uh, help drive the thoroughness of an infrastructure penetration test. In our motto is more than a VA skin. And I think our CEO, Richard Rogerson, who came up with that model was that he identified a problem in a lot of penetration testing firms is that they were selling pen tests as a VA. Believe it or not, to this day, we can still see that happening um, in, all, in, in even bigger organizations. When they ask their pen testers to do things, they would run a scan, dump the report, here's the pen test. Right? That's actually very different from what we value and what we uh, what we try to you know provide when we try to do this kind of service the value that we provide is we're shifting away from that whole vulnerability scan as a pen test that's not what a pen test is all about and I think um, Packet Labs is one of the firms in, within Canada that really embodies that value right so whenever clients come to us and they get a penetration test you know, some of them are like, I have no idea that a pen test was like this. It's like we get so much just out of this one pen test. And a lot of the times they keep coming back to us because, you know, they appreciate the thoroughness that we bring and the impact that we are able to illustrate through the findings that we write.